Today we're going to work on converting percents to fractions and decimals, as well as solving problems involving percents. Now you've seen percents, fractions, and decimals a couple times now um, at this point in your math career. So I expect that you could almost do these notes on your own as soon as I give you a reminder, and then you're going to check your work. Pause the video, copy down your target, try these two warm-ups, and then press play. So for the first warm-up, on my last test, I scored a 68 out of 80. What, what percent is this? You're just taking 68 over 80, and you need to figure out what percent that is. I would reduce it. You know, think about what can I can take out of both of these. I definitely could take out a 4. When I take out a 4, I get 17 out of 20. And remember that a percent is always out of 100. So maybe I want to multiply that by something to get 100 on the denominator. Well, I'd have to multiply 20 by 5, so I multiply the top by 5, and that gives me 85. So this is an 85% score on that test. For B, I want you to describe the picture of the shaded region three different ways. You could say I have 1, 2, 3, 4 out of the 5 pieces. You could say that that is 80% of the grid. And you could also say that it's 0.8. Or eight tenths. Okay, those are the three days, three different ways that you could represent that. So check over those warm-ups. If you have any questions, please see me or your teacher and let us know. Otherwise, you're ready for it. So remember, guys, you should know this already. But a percent is a ratio that compares a number to 100. It's always going to be, you know, like that test, 85 out of 100, or you get a quiz back and you got a 19 out of 20. Um, it's a ratio that's comparing a number to 100, typically. Uh, so for percent, it's always being compared to 100. Your score, if you had a 19 out of 20, you can figure out what percent that is by figuring out what it would be out of 100. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Um, so for the first one, I just want you to find equivalent ratios, percents, and decimals. You can work ahead of me on this one. Um, or you can pause the video and do it first, whichever way you want to do it. I think you could probably work ahead of me while you're listening. Remember that to change a percent to a decimal, you're going to just divide by 100, which is the same as moving the decimal point 2 to the left. To get a percent to a decimal, you're going to divide by 100. That's all you're doing. So my decimal for the first one would be 0 0.25. To get a fraction, then, you could always start with your percent, which is 25, but it's a ratio, so it's out of 100, and reduce that down. What can you take out of both of those? And what does that leave you with? When you're starting with the decimal, to convert the decimal to the percent, now you multiply by 100. So that's really just going to move the decimal two to the right. Think about it. Decimal to percent, the number gets larger. Percent to decimal, the number gets smaller. So this is actually going to be 0.8%. You can have a decimal in a percent. That is OK. To get the fraction, then, if this is 0.8 out of 100, we don't leave decimals in fractions. That's really 8 out of what? 1,000. Now reduce this fraction. What can you take out of both of those? You can actually take 8 out of both of those. But if you don't know that right away, maybe you start with 4. If I take out 4, I'd be left with 2 out of 250 which can then be reduced to 1 out of 125. And the last one, starting with a fraction, to get the percent, just get it to be out of 100. So if I, want, if I have 61 out of 50 and I want to make it a 100, what did I do to get there? I multiply by 2, so I multiply the top by 2. That's going to give me 122. That's 122%. You can have a percent over 100, okay? You can find it. Um, so that is okay. Then to get it to be a decimal, again, you just divide by 100. That's going to move the decimal two spaces over to the left. This should, be, this should have been a review for you. You will have some of these questions in your quick check, but it should go pretty easy for you. If you do need more help, please open up your book and look at more examples for this. So here's the two different ways you can solve these problems, okay? And I'm going to do number two with you, A and B, and then you're going to do three and four and check what I have. 
There's two options for you. You can either use ratios, set up a proportion. If you do that, it's going to be part over whole is equal to percent out of 100. Your teachers last year might have said is over of. Okay, but make sure that you put the whole on the bottom, whatever the whole is that I'm talking about. Or you can set up an equation, but when you do that, remember that of means to multiply, and also write this down. You need to make sure you convert your percent to a decimal before you put it into an equation. You cannot put 80% in as 80 in the equation. You would want to put in 0.8. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to solve them both ways. I'm going to solve A using a proportion and B using an equation. Then you can do 3 and 4 on your own any ways that you would like, but I do ask that you at least try one each way. So for A, let's do a proportion. If I want to find 60% of 7, 60 is my percent. Percent is always a comparison to 100. The of 7, if I want to find 60% of 7, 7 is my whole. That's my whole thing, and I'm finding a percent of it. So I don't know what percent that is, or what number that is, so I'm going to put an x there. Solving a proportion, we saw that we can cross multiply as a shortcut. So we're going to have 100x is equal to 420. Then you can divide by 100 on both sides, and x is going to equal, please, please, please don't pull your calculator out for this, 4.2. That's one way you can set up the problem, okay? A, um, a proportion, part over whole, equals x up, equals percent over 100. Another way you could do it is to set, write an equation. And I literally like to just translate it right below the words. But remember that percents always must be a decimal. So if I want to find, I don't know what it is, 210% to make that a decimal, I'd move it over to. Of means to multiply. And 80, I just keep the same. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. If you set up the proportion, you're going to end up doing this multiplication anyway. So it just kind of slims down your work. I want to find what that is. So to finish off the equation, I could put x on the other side. All I'm going to do is multiply these. So times 80. Again, please don't pull out your calculator. Come on, put the zero down there. 8 times 1 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. We have one decimal place in the numbers that you're multiplying, so you're going to move it over 1 in your answer. X is equal to 168. On all of these problems, please ask yourself, is it reasonable? Does it make sense? Does it seem right? 60% of 7. Well, 60% is a little bit more than half. What's half of 7? Half of 7 is 3.5. Is this a little bit more than 3.5? Yeah, that seems to make sense. So I'm not really checking, but I'm just kind of verifying that it could possibly be true. 210% of 80. Well, 100% of 80 would be 80. 200% of 80 would be double 80. So it would be 160. Is this a little bit more than 160? Yeah, so it seems that it could be correct. So here's the deal. I want you to do 3 and 4. Pause the video and try 3 and 4 right now. Just make sure you at least try A or B as a proportion and A or B as an equation. So pause the video and try that now. And then I'm going to show you my work for this. Also check at the end, is your answer, answer reasonable? On these examples, guys, your X may be in a different spot than that first example. Go ahead and pause and try. Okay, let's take a look at your work that you have here. You should have tried each of these problems. I'm going to um, show my work both ways. So it doesn't matter how you did it as a proportion or as an equation. But on the first one, you should have 25%. And on the second one, you should have 77.7% or 77 and, um, and 7 ninths percent. If you, need to, if you don't have these numbers, please pause and make corrections. Try, try to find where you made your mistake, identify it, and correct it. On the next example, then, Again, I'll show you my work both ways. So I did equations and proportions on all of these problems. You only have to do one. Um, you should get 35 for 4a and 500 for 4b. N Notice how in my equations, you know, when I see that word of, I make multiply. When I see the word is, I put equals. This is the same work as this. It's just a little simplified, okay? Whichever way you want to do it is fine as long as you document your work. 
Again, pause if you have any corrections to make. All right, let's try this jewelry example then. Jewelers use the carat system to determine the amount of pure gold in jewelry. Pure gold is 24 carats, meaning that it's 100% gold. So therefore, pure gold has all, the whole part is 24. That's what you need to think, keep in mind. A 14 carat gold ring will be 14 parts gold and 10 parts other metal. What percent of this ring, if it's 14 gold, 10 other metal, what percent of it is gold? So I want to find the percent. I already know that's what I don't know. 14 is the part out of the whole thing. The whole thing is how many carats? 24. Go ahead and solve this by cross multiplying. You could also, FYI, reduce this if you wanted. So you could make this 12 over, I'm sorry, 7 over 12 to make it a little bit of smaller numbers. You do not have to do this though. So I'm going to divide by 12 on both sides and I end up with x is equal to 58%. On the next one, find the number of carats in the bracelet that is 42% gold, round to the nearest whole number. Well, I want to know how many carats of it um, need to make it 42% gold. So now I know the 42 out of 100. I don't know how many carats, but I do know what the whole is still. I'm still talking about gold, guys. It's still 24. Go ahead and cross multiply and solve this. Again, if you wanted, you could reduce these down, but you do not have to do that. You're going to end up with 10.08, but it says to round to the nearest whole number, so it's about 10 carats. If you have any questions here, pause, look over it, uh, ask, ask about it in class or seventh period. The last exa example is an extension. I want you to try this on your own. Pause the video here and try it. See if there's a relationship that exists and then press play. Okay, I hope that you've tried it and hopefully you have noticed a relationship. I did a couple more examples here, and I found that they always came out to the same answer as each other. Why does that work? Why does that happen? Well, think about it. When you do this proportion, you are always multiplying the whole times the percent. So if you switch the whole and the percent numbers, they're still going to be multiplied together when you cross multiply. I'm still going to have whole times percent, no matter which way you set it up. Therefore, the cross product is still the same, so your answer is still the same. All right, you're on to your quick check.